Yeah. Our guests uh, joining us from Washington, D.C. Richard Fowler is a Democratic political uh, strategist. Uh, thanks very much for being with us, Richard. And here in the studio, David Webb, host of the David Webb Show on Sirius XM Radio, co-founder of Tea Party 365. All right, gentlemen, um, Richard, let me start with you because David Prosser said before uh, the election, as all of these unions and, and, and public workers and some liberal groups were coming in and throwing their weight behind his challenger, he said, you know what, if I go down in defeat, and I'm paraphrasing here, he said, this is the end of judicial independence. Does he have a point? Not at all. I think judicial the, the, the judges are subjected to the people, especially in Wisconsin. It is a voter, it's an, elect, an electoral issue, and if the people feel as though he doesn't represent their interest, then they have the right to vote him out. He's already served one ten-year term as a Supreme Court justice, and if he, doesn't, if, he's, if he doesn't win a second term, then the people have spoken. David? Well, actually, the key in that is subject to the people. When you've, got, <clears throat> when you've got outside interest money involved in this, when you've got a heavy union push and it's such a heavy partisan push, it's not just the people of Wisconsin involved, it's union interests. And let's face it, Richard Trumka, Andy Stern, and all these other union supporters, including this administration, are in there to win this battle to keep collective bargaining. I want to move on to the underlying issue in this, Richard, and that is Judge Marianne Sumi, the circuit court judge, uh, who issued this temporary restraining order saying uh, that the legislature, the Republicans, violated the open meetings law, uh, may have violated the open meetings law uh, without giving proper notice and so on and so forth, and she issued a temporary restraining order. There are two Wisconsin Supreme Court cases, and we had our brain room look them up, over the weekend, both of them uh, stand for the following proposition, that a judge has no business getting involved in legislative matters absent a constitutional issue, and there is none here. So isn't Judge Sumi just wrong in issuing this TRO? Not at all, Greg. Judge, what Judge Toomey is saying, what, what the judge is saying is pretty simple. What the judge is saying is, is that they violated the due process of members of the House of Representatives and the public. The people that are elected and the people that are elected to serve in public office in Wisconsin have to notify their constituents and their voters of when they're having a meeting. Unless meeting it's a special session, in <coughs> which case there are no such rules that apply to the open meeting law. And the parliamentarian, this is a guy who lives and breathes the rules. He's the chief clerk. Uh, he issued a statement immediately after uh, all of this occurred, and he said, in essence, this is a special session. There is no open meeting law. We gave notice on the bulletin board of a couple of hours, and that was more than we had to. So there's been no violation of open meeting rules. Well, it's pretty, like I said, it's pretty simple. This is about the voters of Madison, Wisconsin, and the voters of Wisconsin in general. At the end of the day, these individuals want to know about what is happening in their state house, and they have. A, I think they should have at least a grace period of 24 hours to know what's being up for consideration, yeah. so they have full and complete transparency. So the, the GOP complaints. No, no, no. Let's 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 let you're contradicting yourself, because here's what you're saying. It is, with all due respect, it's about the rule of law. And you just talked about the fact that laws need to be followed. Well, the judge, one, cannot rule on that issue because it is outside her purview. They judge shop this to try and keep the battle going. And, the co and what you just made about the people of Wisconsin, the parliamentarian and the law and the system in place says that they, have ab they abide the law in this case. They didn't have to follow that two-day notice. Well, um, the other issue is this. Um, the issue is not judicially ripe right. until the law takes effect, and the That's judge the other prevented point. it from taking effect, so she's premature. Right. A again, she has no right within her purview. They shot, first of all, at a circuit court judge level. Think right. about this. This should have gone, if at anything, to an appellate or Supreme Court after the law is taken effect. But she cannot preemptively strike against a law which hasn't taken effect. You know, Richard, it is true. They shopped this around. They filed a bunch of lawsuits in a bunch of different uh, courts. And all of those judges said, what are you, nuts? Uh, until they finally found one who bit, and that was Marianne Sumi. Look, it's pretty simple. What, Marianne, what Judge Marianne Sumi did was she stood up for due process, and the due process. Well, can, can you tell have, me what the due process allotment is in the law for her action? 
Look, David, it's pretty simple. The judge has the ability to rule on whether or not due process was allowed, and that's exactly what no, she did she in this does not. case. Not by <laughs> Wisconsin law. She doesn't under this. So can you tell me again what legally allows her to rule on this? Find me the part in the Wisconsin code. It doesn't Look, exist. Oh, at the end of the day, it's pr this is this is a, this no. Is at the end, at the end of the situation. day, there's a time when you've lost the debate because you don't have the backing of the legislative structure. That's a fact. You know, here, here's my question now. All of this can be, all of the litigation can be avoided on the issue of whether or not there was an open meetings rule violated here, if the legislature uh, simply went back into session and passed this thing all over again, and this time, you know, follow the open meetings rule if you want, even though it may mm -hmm. be moot. Uh, why not do that? Well, you know, I, I agree. Why not do that just to say, but you know what we start setting is a precedence where we have to have dual passage of laws. And by the way, that's not fair to both sides, Republican or Democrat. If you followed the guidelines of your constitution and of your legislative body and passed a law, whether you're Democrat or Republican, follow those guidelines and you have done as the people have asked you to do and as the constitution states. Well, it's interesting because um, the state has already taken it up on appeal directly to the Wisconsin Supreme Court. And they can go ahead and rule even if Judge Prosser's uh, election is challenged. Uh, you know, in, in other words, a challenge can't hold it in, in abeyance the, uh, the decisions of the Wisconsin Supreme Court. So we may have a decision sometime pretty soon on the issue of open meetings anyway. Uh, my guess is it could be resolved in the course of the next month. Um, all right, I want to switch over to the other subject that uh, we're paying attention to very closely because it involves each and every American. It is the shutdown imminently of the government on Friday night at the stroke of midnight. Um, here's what John Boehner said yesterday after meeting with the president. Quote, the president is certainly entitled to disagree with our budget, but what exactly is his alternative? If he wants to have an adult conversation about solving our fiscal challenges, he needs to lead instead of sitting on the sidelines. Richard, this guy leads our country, and yet he's out there on the campaign trail today in Pennsylvania. He's attending a, an Al Sharpton awards ceremony, and he's talking to Pennsylvanians about wind power. Isn't this a time that he needs to be in the White House, working with Boehner and Harry Reid and other congressional leaders, or up on Capitol Hill, as some past presidents have done. Look, the president is the president is in, the president's in Pennsylvania today, talking about energy, talking about how we win America's future. He's not campaigning. He's talking about America's energy policy. Oh, what we saw from come on. what we saw from the <laughs> come president. On. What we Don't saw kid from a kidder, Richard. He's campaigning <laughs> for goodness now. sakes. Second, he launched Greg. his campaign on Monday. They opened up their offices and. They're ready to do business, and he's out. He didn't need to be in Pennsylvania talking about wind power, and he doesn't need to be at Al Sharpton's awards ceremony either. A whole on a second, Greg. At the end of the day, the, the president met with both John Boehner and congressional leaders yesterday. And yesterday, once again, as always, For the John first Boehner time, moved, congratulations. Moved the he moved the goalpost. We said that he we were willing to cut 33. Goalposts. Come on. He, no, look, David. He said we were willing. We were willing to cut 33 billion dollars from the budget. He said that's a good number. He even said in his press conference, the White House offered us a good deal, but we want more. Yeah. And well, that shows that they're, they're just no. They're not willing to negotiate. They're still, no, 30, also stated, they're still 30 billion apart, aren't they? Right. They're, they're 30 billion also, apart. But let's 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 look at the president in Pennsylvania for a very important point. He's talking about wind power in Pennsylvania that has very little, but has a majority of coal, where he said he would actually bankrupt the coal industry. So here he is in a state which since 2007 has 6,000 leases filed for coal and natural gas and under 20 approved. That's one thing. Two, as far as leadership, the president shows up 36 hours before the impending shutdown and decides to get involved. You know what? I was a football player in high school and college. You only move the goalposts when you actually get to the end zone. The president has not moved the ball at all. What he did was he punted it over and Reed and Boehner sat down up until late last evening. But the fact is, here's what's happened. The House has passed a budget. 
the Senate won't even bring one to the floor under Reid, so they haven't done their job. The Democrats should have passed this budget last year, but they would not pass the budget when they had all three branches of government because essentially they didn't want to show their profligate spending and get into a budget battle before the election. So the Democrats have failed when they had the majority and the opportunity, and Richard, the opposition has also been Richard, in their it's party. it's the first time Congress has failed to pass a budget since, on time since 1974. And Democrats had control of the House, the Senate, and the White House. Look, it's pretty simple. This is what's happening right now. The president has issued the president has issued a budget to Congress. We're waiting on we're waiting on the we're waiting on the Republicans in the House of Representatives to make a move and really pass a budget. They're more interested in getting their policy writers at the bottom of the bill, such as their health to unfund the health care bill, to unfund Planned Parenthood, than they are in keeping the American government open. The consequences of the Republicans' actions are pretty simple. If we let the Republicans get their way, then Adam Adam will not be able to receive Pell grants. Little Rebecca won't be able to get Head Start to get a jump start in her education. Luann and Lois will not be able to receive Meals on Wheels. The Republicans want to cut all these okay, programs to the middle class. Good. I'm glad we went there. Let's go to the Office of Management and Budget on the shutdown process and what services are actually cut and what services are, put, are kept I'm in I'm not place. talking about that. I'm talking about H.R. 1, which is the Republican okay. budget bill. They want to cut Pell Grants in the middle of the school year. This shows that they're no, not first committed of all, to the not, American First people. of all, no government program ever gets cut immediately and ever has in the history of our legis well, that's legislative Well, that's what's advocated body. in H.R. 1, though. Okay. Is that not, what advocate, is that not what's we, advocated we in H.R. 1? These one? programs do have to be restructured and cut. But... This, this, this hyperbole that goes on in this debate stays outside of what actually happens in a shutdown. We have Chuck Schumer saying the caucus has instructed me to use extreme, and that's what I'm telling you. The Democrats play policy, play hyperbole with policy at a time in America when we need real fiscal austerity. Let's face it, mm -hmm. either we do it or our creditors, China, Japan, which is now in its own economic mess, second largest holder of our debt, they will. And if we don't cut programs and funding that is duplicative or wasteful or has state-level comparative programs, we will never get anywhere. The problem is the beast is the federal government. And yes, Social Security checks will go out, welfare checks will continue, the military national will defense get will continue, justice system will continue, farms, food inspections, air traffic. But here's my favorite, Greg. This is what I love about our government. Activities essential to the preservation of the essential elements of the money and banking system of the United States, including borrowing and tax collection activities of the Treasury. So guess what? The government may be down, but they'll be coming for your taxes. The problem is... I, we ha I have to continue paying my taxes? <laughs> yeah, I, I was this, planning this on not, not paying <laughs> beginning Saturday. <laughs> no, they, this is the reality. I already spent that money. You know, look, we're, the shutdown... In my opinion, we have reached a point where it's time to starve the beast. Yeah. That is the federal government. <laughs> and we have got to make some hard choices. Americans, by and large, realize that we need those hard choices, or else this country is going to be in a long-term serious yeah. trouble. You know, Richard, I do want to ask you about um, the remarks of Senator Schumer, Chuck Schumer of New York, uh, otherwise known as a guy who'd walk a mile for a camera. Um, <laughs> You know, he got caught with his pants down when he, when he didn't realize that reporters were listening in on his conversations as he was coaching other uh, Democrat, Democratic senators about how to trash the Tea Party. Uh, and then he hauls off and, and he and Harry Reid both talk about how the Tea Party is awful, it doesn't represent America. There's a Rasmussen pullout that shows that, that basically uh, a majority of Americans um, identify with the Tea Party, I think the number was 48 percent, and, you know, then when asked, do you identify with Congress, <laughs> you know, they got like a handful. Um, aren't they wrong when they trash the Tea Party as not being representative of how uh, a lot of Americans feel? Look, I think Chuck, both Chuck Schumer and the leadership in the House are pretty. They're work, and the leadership in the Senate. They're working very hard to pass a no, real. No, no. What's to the answer to the question? You use the word Hold extreme. On, let me, it's let political me finish, hyperbole. David. No, let this me, is deflection, and it's time let to finish, stop David. the deflection. Look, right. Chuck well, let's, Schumer. Let's Chuck let Schumer says Richard, it. Answer the question. Hold on a Have your say, Richard. 
At the end of the day, it's pretty simple. This is what it boils down to. The real question that we've got to ask ourselves is who is looking out for the American people? Is it the Tea Party or is it the Democrats? And the, the, pretty, the answer is pretty simple. It's the Democrats. John oh, Boehner oh, himself, so, hold so, on a second, let me finish. John Boehner himself stated that they want 100, they they want 100 the 200 people, they look out for and 18 Republican votes to pass the budget. They don't want, they're not even considering the Democrats. No, He's no, not no, willing no. to work bipartisan, bipartisanly. The Tea Party is not the only party in Washington. No, no, the, more first of all, they're official. not a party. It's a bunch of founding principles. Look, let me put it to the, to the American people and to the viewers. Simple example. If somebody fabricates a lie and somebody else, Senator Chuck Schumer and Harry Reid, and you now perpetuate that lie as being the right thing, is it become a truth if you repeat it enough? He said, use it as extreme, and you can't tell me, because I think you're a pretty straightforward guy, that when the Democrats decide to use words and try to sell a position based on a lie, just so they can get an argument won, that is the right way to go David, about it. out of time. David, uh, uh, Richard Fowler, I'm going to let you have the last word on that. Go ahead, Richard. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Let's put it. Let's put this question to the American people. It's a. It's a if and then. Would you rather have Pell grants? Would you rather have the people protecting our clean air, or clean water, which is all going to be cut under the Republican HR one plan? Would you like to have a plan that has Medicare go to vouchers, so we're cutting Medicare for our senior citizens and Medicaid for our children? Or would you rather? Uh, or would, or would you rather have Pell? Would you rather have all these services all right. under the Democratic plan? That's what you're going to get under the Republican plan. They're going to hurt the middle class. They're going to hurt working Americans. And they're going to hurt. Our economic yeah, economy. the world's going to end. The Democrats are going to save us. Progressive policies work. All right, well, yeah, okay. Both you know, sides are fairly represented here. Richard <laughs> Fowler, David Webb, uh, thank you both. We're going to pause and take a quick break, and then we're going to come back and talk about